everyone, it's Leanne. Welcome to another video on my channel. Today I want to share with you a way that I made some easy, simple wall art using materials that I had laying around my craft room. Now, I had some stickers that I really love that my sister bought for me, and they were bird stickers. They were from Martha Stewart, and so these are pretty old, and I don't think they're in print now, but these ones my sister bought me, and I kept them forever. They laid around my craft room for a long time, and I didn't know what to do with them because I really loved these birds. She knows that I like birds, and I love glitter, so it was kind of one of those things where I didn't want to waste them on anything. I didn't want to put them on a journal that I might close the book and then never look at again. I really wanted to make sure that I could come up with a way to use these stickers in a very valuable way. So I came up with this great idea to do wall art. It was super inexpensive. And in the end, I ended up with a piece that I really enjoyed. It was stickers that I really liked, and it looks really sweet in our bathroom. So what I used were these stickers, and then I had um, this pad of scrapbook paper from Martha Stewart, and she had bought me this as well. So what I did was I selected a patterned paper out of here, and um, I just took a look at the different ones and tried putting the birds on the background and selected one that I liked. And then I put it in an inexpensive frame that I purchased at Walmart. Now I'm going to create another one. And I have this frame from Ikea that I bought. And this is, um, I'll zoom out so you can see, this is a 5x5 five five shadow box frame. And I'm going to put the bird in here. So I'll show you the way I create this. So I'm going to pull the back off. This frame here from Ikea is the Ribba frame. And it's 22509. Um, I I'm not sure if they are the same in every country. I purchased this in Canada. And so this was a very inexpensive frame. It's really pretty though because it does have that shadow box. So I'm going to pull out the insert, um, the matting, so that I can adhere the bird to that. So now I'm going to pick um, a background that I like with a bird that I like. I'm going to pull this out here. So there was a couple that I was considering um, that I looked at before I started the video. So I love this background because it reminds me of sort of like an old farmhouse um, wallpaper or something. So I thought that maybe one of the birds might be nice on this patterned paper. I'd probably maybe put it sideways to match um, that way. This one's actually really cute. I really like the bluebird. I think I'm down to these two birds. So I really like that guy, or this one looks really nice as well on that paper. So that was one that I'm considering, or I'm just going to slide my paper over. It's pretty big. <laughs> it's hard to fit it all in frame um, without getting too many shadows in the way too. But um, I do like this solid blue background as well. I think the birds... They look pretty on that, but I kind of like the pattern better. It just adds a little bit of dimension to the picture. So this one's really sweet, too. I think I might do the bird on this, actually. I really like that. So let's do this one. Let's do the bluebird on this medallion-style pattern. So I'm going to just pop this out. So it's much easier to work with the book out of the way. So this looks really sweet. I think I might put the bird in the middle of the medallions here. So I want the bird to sit in the center, but I want the medallions to sort of be um, in the center of the frame as well. Because it's a square frame and the pattern in the background is square, it's going to really show off if it's crooked, and I want to make sure that it is straight as possible. So just using this as a rough guide, though, I have the medallions sort of equalized on each side, and then I can see where the bird would sit in the middle, and I can kind of see the angle that I want him to be at, or her. So this I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see kind of where the pattern's falling and kind of the placement that I'm thinking of. So you can see there, um, and so I'm thinking maybe if the belly center is um, about there. So I'm going to take the bird sticker off. This is very nerve-wracking doing this part because I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and just decide how I want the bird. I think that looks really good. Okay, so I'm going to put the bird there. And so now I'm just going to measure out. It would be easy to trace this, but I want to um, bring it out wider than the frame because I want to be able to stick it on the background. So I'm going to put this on with a set square and a T-square and, and 
and get this squared up so it's perfect. So I have this um, T-square that I'm going to line up to the edge of my desk. And so this will give me a baseline to get a very um, straight line to write on. Um, and I can make sure that I have square lines that I draw to cut this. So I'm going to put this on the side. And then I'm going to use a set square. So this is a triangle square. So what I will do is pull this down. It'll be a little bit off frame. But this sits down on the bottom of my T-square. And then with holding my T-square against the edge of my desk, I can push this down to the bottom of my T-square and then get a very straight vertical edge and horizontal edge. So I'm going to do that, and then I'll show you cutting this after I have it measured out. So what I'm going to do here is I've laid this out and centered it as best as I can the way I want it to fit in the frame. And then what I did is, you saw me reposition it, um, I moved my ruler along the desk and I repositioned it to be, to be parallel with the ruler so that when I draw that line it's straight. So now what I'm doing is I'm using this as a guide. I want to measure a line to cut, but I want to measure it outside of the window. So I'm just going to measure on the outside of the frame because I have that frame where I want it, so I'm going to use that as my guide. And then I'm just going to push this into place and draw some lines that I'll match up on this side. It doesn't have to be perfect though, because I am going to be, um, well, you won't see this part. I'm going to be cutting and this will be behind the matting. So now I have my lines drawn and I have everything ready to to cut out and trim. So I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and then a cork back metal ruler. I like to flip the ruler upside down so that it's flush to the paper. If this cork back is between the ruler and the paper then there's room for my knife to pivot a little bit and I want to make sure I get a straight line. It's just a habit that I've um, fell into from doing graphic design and doing graphic techniques and so even though it's not necessary in this case because the cut line will be behind the matting um, that is the reason why I do it, and so if you ever see me do it in videos, now you know why, and it's a good practice to have. I also use green painter's tape to put down my paper. This way I can remove it without damaging my paper. If you use a, a common masking tape, like the yellow type, then it's got a bit more stickiness to it, and it might rip your paper. If you're cutting an even edge and you don't want to have the chance of wrecking your paper, then you'll want to definitely make sure that you're using painter's tape. Now, my ruler just slid <laughs> as I'm talking and I'm cutting. Um, I just slid off the line, but it's okay because it's going to be behind um, the matting. But again, you want to make sure that when you're, you're holding your ruler because it's not on the cork side, you want to make sure that you hold it very firm, which I did not do. <laughs> I like to put my X-Acto blade on the line first so that I can make sure that that ruler is even to that line and then pivot up the other side and then hold it firmly in place and slice the line. And I always recommend cutting away from your artwork as well. So the next part is putting it on the matting and I'll show you some tricks that I do um, for centering that up and how I get around evening it out. So I do use regular masking tape just to protect the artwork. So as I mentioned, this has more stickiness, but it can still be removed very gingerly if you're careful. So what I like to do is put masking tape on the picture first and kind of prepare that to be added um, or pushed down to the backing. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put the masking tape on half of the background so that it is hanging out, if I can pick it up here. Um, so you can see that a little bit of the tape is hanging over. And then I like to do both sides. So if I do the top, do the bottom, or if I do the left, do the right. And that way it can't pivot because if it's hanging just by this piece of tape, it could still pivot at the bottom. So I put down two pieces of tape, turn it over like this, make sure that they're very secured on the back. And then because this is a patterned paper, I can easily use that pattern to line up my frame. 
I can make sure that between each edge I've got the same amount of pattern showing and so if it's showing a bump on the top I'll make sure it's showing an even bump on the bottom. I'm going to lay this down. It's a little bit bubbled so it still has some wiggle room if I need to shift it. And I think it needs to come up just a little bit. Maybe down a little bit. Now if you did not have a patterned paper and you're trying to do the same thing I'm doing what I would recommend is making sure that your bird or your artwork is centered to where you feel it looks good. And so use that to line it up. Um, at the end of the day, we look at things with our eyes, not with rulers. So if it looks visually straight, um, then I would recommend just doing it by eyeballing it. If you're not comfortable with that, you can take out your ruler and then put it up against each edge and make sure that the same measurement is on each edge that way. That's another way to do it. So I have this in place where I like it. So I'm going to push it down where I know that masking tape is. And I'm going to push very firmly because I just want to make sure it gets a good stick and doesn't fall off when I lift it up. So I'm going to very carefully lift this up and flip it over. And so I have this placed. And now that I have that position, I'm just going to continue around the edge and tape it all the way around, making sure that there's no puckering or bubbles. This paper is kind of a thicker, almost like a semi cardstock, so it it really won't warp or bubble like a, just a regular piece of paper might. But if you're using just a regular scrapbooking paper that's of a typical paperweight, you'll just want to make sure that it's sitting flush and not bowing in the middle because that will show when it's framed. And so I taped this all the way around the edge. I've had instances before where I taped just the corners or I might have taped just the top and then parts of the image will droop or sag as it hangs over time and I don't want that to happen. So I want to make sure that it's going to stay all the way around. I make sure now that I have that taped, I'm just going to dust it off, make sure I don't have any pencil shavings, erasers or whatever, um, eraser shavings or any little specks of craft stuff on, on the back. So now it's ready to put in my frame. I would recommend that before you put it in the frame that you take some Windex and some paper towel and clean the inside of the glass very well and make sure that there's no dust on it. I've already done that um, so that's ready to go and then make sure it's very dry because if you put your picture down you don't want it to maybe the colors run because of the Windex for example. So I'm going to set that in and then you want to make sure that you match up the hangers with the top of the photograph and then these just have the bend tabs. You just bend them down and I make sure that they're nice and snug and put together. And so then I can flip this over and I have my little bird ready to hang up in my art room and I'm so happy with how this looks. He's so cute. One of my goals this year is to redo my craft room. Um, I'd like to paint and then just kind of reorganize with the new items that I have and make room or make better use of my space. So this will definitely be going in my new craft room when I get it all ready. So I hope you guys enjoyed this craft video, this paper craft video. It's a little bit different, but I did this a while ago. Um, the birds in the bathroom that I showed you earlier, and I love them so much, and I think they're so cute. So um, it's a fun way to create artwork without having to spend a fortune, and it's a way to enjoy what you have as well. So if you did like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you're notified as I post more videos, and your support really helps my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.